What's up guys? My name is Tristan and this is Nate and this is Road Team Reviews. If you are a returning viewer and a loyal supporter of this channel, welcome to season two, officially of the college football season. And man, I can't tell you how excited. I bet you're excited too. And if you're not, then I don't know. I don't think you're from America. So before we head off to the stadium, uh, we just want to say we love your endless support. And like we said before, if you're new here, uh, please share this video with a friend, like, subscribe, comment on this video. Please help make our dreams come true. Like it's a miracle that we can say like we are in our second official season of Road Team Reviews and we want to continue to do that for the rest of our lives pretty much. And you know, in order for us to do that and travel to further stadiums, we hear you, man. We want to travel out west and go to these awesome atmospheres. But in order for us to do that, we need your help. Because if you show support for us, we'll show support for you and we'll take care of you. We want to help inspire people to travel and we want you to just have a good overall watching experience. It is so good to have you back. If you've watched our videos, kept up with us, well then welcome. This is the place for just college football diehards. Season two, we are so ready to get back into it. One of the best weekends of the year, opening weekend of college football season. It is basically a holiday down here in the south, our part of the country. Music to my ears. Some places, like, they'll have school out early. You know, it's that big a deal. It's beautiful, man. It really is. First off, to kick off this first game of the season, we're going to no other than Wallace Wade Stadium at Duke University. Durham, North Carolina. Durham, North Carolina. We're very aware that Duke is predominantly a basketball school. You don't even have to be a football fan to even know that. They are just a legendary basketball program with Coach K retiring and everything. Listen, the name Duke speaks for itself within the basketball community. synonymous with college basketball. Exactly. You don't really think college football. You're probably wondering like why we're going to a lesser program like Duke. But all I have to say is if you've watched our first episode of Road Team Reviews, <laughs> then you'll understand like why we do the things we do. We travel 10 hours to Indiana State for a football school that didn't e I didn't even know was a football school at the time. I just knew Larry Bird played basketball there. And then the week after that, we went to Wake Forest on a Friday. And this is almost like a year from today. It's We're like, doing the same thing. We might just have to make it a tradition to just keep going to Friday games on the opening weekend. Exactly. Yeah, Duke may not be a good football program, but it's a fresh new start. The season opener is all about opportunity. When we went into Wake Forest last year, we had no expectations at all whatsoever. Next thing you know, they finished off the season 11 and three and went to the ACC championship. So, you know, we're, we're opportunists. We have a free mind. We have an open mind when it comes to stadiums and football programs. We're not all about hype. We're about true, genuine content at the end of the day. So we're just here to debunk the myth that is Duke a basketball school? Or is Duke just a basketball school? Or can they be something else? Because if, if we look at the history, man, I gotta tell you, it's not good. I think not, there's been a yeah. I think there's been a total of 20 NFL players that have been drafted since 1989. So with like four Not people drafted last year though, which is impressive, but. You got Daniel Jones, you know. Yeah. So Jameson Crowder. You got a few that are kind of relevant in the league right now. So it's just building that momentum, carrying on that little bit of legacy that they have and to see where they go from there. Cause Wake Forest didn't have a rich history. They may have been to like one ACC championship, but yeah, you know, it, it, you gotta start somewhere. We can talk your ear off about this stadium, but it's only a matter of time before we experience it ourselves and show you what it's really about. All right, there's enough chitter chatter. It's about time we get to the stadium. Wallace Wade Stadium, we'll see you in the future. Parking and we got some tailgating going. On. Wow, 
first sight of civilization around here. I never would have thought I'd see any. So what happened just earlier, not too long ago, we were uh, seeing this guy at the very end. And we just followed the game day parking signs. Pulled up right to the podium. Just like, no, you're good. Just go. <laughs> Please don't waste your money at this place. Yeah, like, it ain't <laughs> worth it, man. First impressions. I don't really know what to think of Duke's campus, but I didn't think it'd be like all in the woods like this. This ain't my first rodeo here at Duke. Uh, I'd say this is about like my fourth or fifth time around here, but I uh, just wanted to show Nate around a little bit. Um, it's a very beautiful campus. I like to call it the Hogwarts of college football just because everything around here is very cathedral-like. It's very classic. Uh, Army West Point also has a campus very similar to that. So yeah, I think it's pretty nice dumbest people here we're definitely the dumbest too here yeah walking around here like there's the elite and the most prestigious of students here and like every time i walk here i just somewhat humbled but also embarrassed to walk these I'm just embarrassed just just straight up embarrassed man probably one of my favorite parts of duke campus is just the greenery the beautiful scenery around here one place that we're going to get to in a little bit my personal favorite part is the duke university chapel not only is it just like a historic landmark but they actually still have church services that go on. It's probably one of the most like unique parts about this campus. And you can't miss it. It's kind of like the rocket at the state fair. So Columbia folks, you know, a really cool point of view. Yeah. Duke Law. <laughs> no. Yeah, Duke Law. Or Duke Dad. It's a winner. I think I look pretty good in this Duke Blue, just, just saying. Dude, that does look nice. I'd apply. Yeah. Maybe do a grad program here. Oh, yeah. I think I could get in. You know? Let's just take a moment to appreciate all of this. It literally feels like you're in a Disney cartoon right now. I feel like this is going to be my favorite part of the trip, walking around campus rather mm -hmm. than being at the game. I always like to tell my people, Enjoy the destination. What? Sorry. Enjoy. Enjoy the journey, not the destination. Sometimes you really just gotta appreciate these moments right here in the college football season because you never know what kind of campus you're gonna run into and next thing you know, you're like, in Hogwarts. You could really just take all kind of pictures here, videos um, of yourself, send it to someone who's not familiar and literally fool them into thinking that you're in Europe somewhere. <laughs> Speaking of, there was like this moment where a photographer took couples photos at an Olive Garden and they thought it was pictures in Italy. So like... Oh yeah. I mean, dude, this... you could do that so easily. So much time and effort went into this. I could just chill here and read a book. And I don't even read. Alright, so this is the moment you've been waiting for. And I can't wait to see Nathan's first time coming into this chapel. Overall thoughts on the outside? Oh, it's amazing. It's one of the more just beautiful, pristine structures I've seen in my life. We walk This is like one of the most beautiful chapels and one of the most beautiful structures I've seen to date. I mean it. Look how tall these ceilings are. They got the speakers blended in. Yeah, I didn't even notice that. The speakers? The, it's like those speakers in here, they blend it in. Hey, I can see y'all. Right. When we go down the crypt for the first time, apparently all the former presidents have all been buried down here. So, so no. You're not the only spooky one here. Well, that was freaking awesome. <laughs> That's one thing. You'll never go hungry in this campus, man. I mean, even look at the cafes. The cafes look freaking beautiful. I'm not even gonna lie. I look like a degenerate with these glasses on right now. All right, we're getting closer and closer to the stadium. Uh, looks like we got some live music going on over here. Yeah, we got a show. <laughs> 
Yeah, we got some good festivities over here. ACC football. I see you stepping your game up. All right, here we go. There's a Duke game like this every week. This is freaking crazy. Should we go over to the Temple Fan Tony? Yeah, let's take, let's take a look and see what that's up to. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey. hey. All right, so I was completely shocked to see this. Yeah, I don't even know if they do this for every season opener, but Duke, if you do this every time, I'm going to come here every year. Yeah, yeah thank you, sir. You can carry that. Come on. All right. This way right here? Yes. Thank you. What do they have in common with Tristan sunglasses? You tell me. The beautiful thing about this stadium is that it's connected to pretty much just every other historical landmark. Yeah, so behind me is going to be Cameron Indoor Stadium, the historical basketball venue that everyone knows about. Dude, first impressions on this stadium is like it's it's very modern for how old this school is. And if you're paying that much to go to Duke, that money's got to go you know, somewhere. Like chips or like cracks in the sidewalks. Oh, yeah. Structure like it's pretty awesome. Yeah, this is nice. All y'all gotta do is win some games. You'll pack this thing out every week. So you know you go to a basketball school when your football press box looks like the outside to a basketball coliseum. Bro, even the concession stands are nice. Orange Bowl, Rose Bowl. Is it? Hey, you were talking about that earlier, I right? I wonder if that's like the Rose Bowl that's hosted or like. I think it is. Yeah, it has to be. That was the Pearl Harbor. That's the that's reason been, why. Yeah, that's the reason. I didn't know Duke actually played in it, though. Yeah, I didn't know either. I thought he yeah. just hosted it. All right, so, yeah, we just figured out that not only did they host the Rose Bowl, but they also played in it. They're in Pearl Harbor. So there's a lot of history that goes on into this. It feels so nice, though. It feels like Dude, this, is, this is football season. This right here is my pretty boy sweat. Pretty boy sweat. It looks like we're literally right above the student section, and it looks like it's, like, like you said, it, it was filling in pretty quick. Pretty surprised for the season opener. Yeah. Looks like the students each get jerseys with the back of their names on it, too. Yeah, I noticed that, too. Like, I was wondering what that, I thought it was like family of friends at first, and then I saw like hundreds of other jerseys, and I was like, yo, that's cool. Everyone's hopping on this new light trend over here. They said it's gonna be over on the on the home side. Except for Clemson. Except for Clemson. Y'all have LED lights, y'all just don't have colored lights. It looks like we got beer and a light show. Okay. Hey! Hey yo, I ain't even gonna lie, that's a pretty solid entrance. They're like overflowing the student section, so they're making them go like wrap around now. Well, you know, the funny thing was that there were student section tickets online. I don't know if you saw that, but they were like 25 bucks. We totally forgot right before kickoff. kickoff. Score prediction. What is it? Real All right, quick. Uh, 27, 27, 21 in favor of Duke. I think it's going to be a blowout. We're going to witness a new era of Duke football, so I'm going to go 35 to 14. All right, we'll see you at kickoff. Not even one minute and a half in, and they already score. Freaking wild. Alright, I know you see a lot of empty sections here, but honestly, it doesn't really matter what tickets that you get, as long as it's like not all the way in the corner, but pretty much every other seat is not a bad view. And he just muffed the punt. 
But what I was saying is, yeah. just get general admission tickets. Yeah, just general admission tickets, man, and you'll get it will get the job done. <laughs> Yeah. Please head up to the top of section nine. That's section nine even to claim your cash prize. Wow. The class of 2026. Just happy for the guy, man. Simple Simple things for my you know, you don't get that a lot in life. So. That was just unacceptable. You never cut off swag surfing. I don't care who you are, what school you are. That's just ungrateful. I like. I have a curious question. I wonder if like these are actual football fans or are these just products of Cameron crazies? Most of these are freshmen, so they haven't even yeah. experienced Cameron yet. Yeah. So it's like it can't be Cameron crazies. It's got to be like actual fans. So Wallace Wilds. The Wallace Wilds trademark. <laughs> I swear teams be winning one game. Everyone was everyone was Bama. Bro, pipe down. Pipe down. They're straight up bribing these students to stay, but you know what? Like the students are here, no one else is. But hey, you gotta do what you gotta do. I know this is a long shot, but oh, this is a Duke favorite song right For real, y'all need to give us a thousand dollars. We would have paid for these tickets over here. They didn't swag, sir. No, listen, they even they weren't even in row nine until like or section nine until the like third quarter. Did he kiss me? Menace to society. Isn't it? Just get swarmed right by camera. <laughs> sounds like a sporting sin right there. Man, what a cool experience that was. We got about a three hour drive back home, so we'll see you at the review. What's going on, guys? And welcome to season two of Road Team Reviews. Man, we're glad to be back in the studio for college football yet again. It does feel good to be back in the studio doing a stadium review. We had some fun this off season, but it's good to be back with our bread and butter, doing what we know best. Yeah, it just feels like all, all is right. Okay, so a quick rundown. If you're new to the channel, we have a specific grade structure for all of our stadiums, and it goes down to five categories. First one, stadium structure, atmosphere, history and tradition, scenic value, 
in field design. It's a cumulative grade. Uh, what we do is we both go through, uh, talk it over, over our experiences. We average that out. We average our two final grades together. That is the final grade. We do include a beer bonus point yep. because going into last season, we thought that um, serving beer was a rare commodity, but we have found out that nowadays it is very common. So now we just hand these bonus points out like it's freaking $1 corn dog day at Sonic. Awesome. So now that we got that out of the way, let's get to the review. Up first, stadium structure. So stadium structure is definitely the most important grade. It's the highest uh, grade percentage and the one that really stands out the most to everyone. With Wallace Wade, it's pretty simplistic, but that's what Wallace Wade is. This is a really cool stadium that has a lot of that old school look. It does have a really impressive press box. And from one side, we even said like, wow, this kind of looks like if you were walking into like a basketball arena yeah. or some big like concert venue, like. Yeah, it's very, it's a very big press box. It's probably almost like half of the size of the home section. It's pretty massive for a very small stadium. Speaking of like small stadiums, uh, this is very similar to Wake Forest as it holds around 40,000 people. Yeah. When I come to compare this stadium to anyone else in the ACC, Wake Forest definitely comes into mind. I will say, or I think Duke utilizes their space better, and I think a bowl stadium does benefit a smaller program. I think the only exception where it's acceptable to have a bowl stadium is if it's a really old stadium. Yeah. I, like, I think it broke ground in 1929, but regardless, that was the standard back then. It's cool that they added so many modern renovations to the stadium, and everything in the stadium is extremely organized. So the the fact that they did that with something that's so old but they keep it very classic that's what makes it stand out from like any other ACC any other big power five school props to Duke I don't know if it's just because they're the highest academic elites they're just the intellects of the world but this was the easiest stadium I think to maneuver you have your ticket and you're sitting in like seat 11 you're gonna be on the left side of the walkway you have seat 10 you're gonna be on the right side which that really just helps avoid confusion if you think about it. And speaking of seating, I think the perk of having a bowl stadium and a smaller size stadium is that no matter where you sit in the stadiums, it's gonna be a pretty good view regardless of where you're sitting. And I think they utilized a lot of the blue, especially in the seats. And I think yeah. that was really nice too. The middle sections of the stadium on either side, both are more of the like pro seats you'd see in an NFL stadium. So yeah, it makes the stadium look nice too. And it also that's yeah other than that we'll go in tell y'all our grades for structure i gave it an 83 and my final grade for stadium structure is going to be an 86 all right so now we're going to be moving into the criteria where wall Wade's probably going to take more of a hit it's definitely going to be its lowest grade and that is atmosphere duke mm. we'll address the elephant in the room it's a basketball school <laughs> This is 100% uh, a blue blood basketball school. We didn't want to do that to y'all. We really yeah. wanted to give y'all the benefit of the doubt and go to this game and really just debunk that myth of whether it was a basketball school and that's it. Or maybe y'all had a little bit of potential to be a pretty good program. They at least give it a good effort and I appreciate that. What they do for the students is really cool to see. They gave all the freshmen these like free jerseys. I'm assuming they're free jerseys yeah. with their names on the back of them try to get that like hype behind the football program too but yeah they had a pretty good student section they actually had to extend the student seating from the one corner and it was a, one of the better student sections that we've experienced so far but outside of the students just absolutely nothing yeah just, i was like do i say that there was no, absolutely listen nothing? you just but gotta get yeah. straight to the point there was nobody there yeah I hate to say that, man, because the student section showed up, and I thought that was really good of them because they stayed throughout the whole game. Did they kind of get bribed and like have incentives you to know, stay? You know, that's one thing. But if they get these play, if they get these students to stay, then I think that's yeah. Good. It don't really matter, you know. They had some cool chants. Was it, was it something like to hell or give them hell, Duke or something? Raise yeah. hell, 
They do some fun stuff though with uh, Coach K yeah. and that one song that he which we didn't really know likes. that we I don't know if this yeah. is true or not. Some fan told us this. We don't know if it's true, but that song every time we touch, <laughs> yeah. I thought was just a viral video from when Duke men's basketball played that at their uh, it was either their homecoming or their uh, pep rally or something like that, and it just went viral because Grayson Allen and everyone was getting hyped to that song. But apparently, a fan told us allegedly. That that was Coach K's one of Coach K's favorite songs. Hey, in the comments, if this is true, let us know. If it's not, please tell us. Either way, it's cool that they know that that's something that works for their basketball team, gets them hype, and they carry it over to football, and it still worked out. So, but it is. But at like, the same yeah. time, it's like basketball's kind of carrying y'all at the end of the day. We don't know if these were actual Duke football fans or if these were like products from the Cameron Crazies. Yeah. Like, like the I Wallace said, Wild. The Wallace Wild. You heard it here. Hey. Trademark that. No. I think most of the fans that actually showed up were freshmen. As far as supporting cast from all the other fans, there just, there wasn't anybody that showed up or turned out or anything like that. So we'll be honest. If we sat on the true home side, then this grade probably would have been way lower yeah. too. So um, that at least will help. And uh, yeah, so we'll just get into our grades now for atmosphere. For me, I gave it a 67. And unfortunately guys, my final grade for y'all is gonna be a 65. Not the best, but we have seen worse. A lot worse. Yeah. Okay, and then on to the third grade, which is gonna be scenic value. I'm gonna grade this primarily off of previous schools that we've been to and future schools that we plan on going to as well. So like you kinda gotta meet in the middle with that. So we might grade it on a different scale. We can grade it based off of what we see in the stadium, but me personally, I would like yeah. to grade stadium scenic value just based off of like the specific location it's in, what all is around it in general. First impressions that we, when we get to campus is that you don't really see much. It's just you, you turn into this road with a bunch of forest in Durham, North Carolina, Carolina, but then as you slowly go into the into the campus, you're in Europe. Like you're in some cathedral type country. Everything has like very gothic architecture. Everything just has like archways or stained glass. Everything looks like it was hand carved or like it just looks like everything's stones and mallets. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like it just looks old. Which is super awesome. Old. I guess we can call it a ditch stadium because it is built into the campus. And I think the cool thing about where this is located is that it's literally built right next to Cameron Indoor Stadium. It's the, the athletics hub. Yeah. Right there. Everything's there together. And yeah. Everything just kind of complements each other really nicely. I think it's cool because like when you look at it from an aerial point of view, oh my gosh, man, it's like next to nothing because you can see the chapel, uh, you can see all the other buildings and just beautiful things surrounding the campus because it is in the middle of the woods. There's just a lot of nice shrubbery and stuff going on there. So I thought that was really cool. I think it's cool that you get a pretty cool look at like their practice field right on the other side of the scoreboard. Then yeah, I think they have like the cedar trees that are uh, planted really in a nice formation yeah. around the scoreboard there. But again, we add that into scenic value because at the end of the day, it is something that complements the overall scenery of the stadium. Just that overall look of Duke in the stadium in Wallace Wade as well. Yeah, so the thing about Duke is that it is a private university. So another thing with scenic value is that like you're in campus and like you're not in the middle of a parking lot. Or you're not in like the middle of nowhere where it's just a stadium and nothing else around it. That's what I really appreciate about this football stadium in general because it does feel like a more intimate experience. But um, yeah, overall, uh, there wasn't really too, too much else as far as like significant landmarks you can see from the stadium geographic formations like mountains stuff like that it was uh, just kind of your standard southeastern look so for me i gave scenic value a 70. this by far is going to be one of our most different grades on um, the way i look at this scenic value compared to other schools um like i said i just kind of want to meet in the middle and when i think of it i think of wake forest and i think of app state so for uh, my final grade for scenic value is going to be an 88. all right and on to our fourth grade which is history and tradition 
Wallace Wade Stadium was opened 93 years ago in 1929, so as we mentioned earlier, this is an old stadium. <laughs> it's got a lot of history because legendary head coach named Wallace Wade, who's coached not only the football team, but he coached basketball and he coached baseball. And not only was he that, but he was also an AD. He was, he was an athletic director as well. So to say that he was a legendary prominent figure for Duke is an understatement. I'll give y'all that. That's the least y'all could do is name the stadium after that guy. But uh, before it was Wallace Wade Stadium, it was originally called Duke Stadium. I know, very original. And just recently, about like seven years ago, in 2015, they renamed the field Brooks Field. So Coastal Carolina's got Brooks, Brooks Stadium, Stadium, and then Duke's got Brooks Field. I will say Duke does have a pretty cool history. You know, they've been in the ACC. I think they are pretty much uh, like original member. They've won just one ACC championship. The one with Steve Spurrier. I think that might be their only one. They, they got that going for them. They had more rough patches than uh, success here at Duke. They did have a pretty good run in kind of the mid-2010s. Back in 2013, specifically, they went on that run, went to the ACC championship game. I would say that revitalized Duke football because shortly after they, or maybe during that, is when they added the new seating in right above the bowl and between the press box. But yeah, adding that press box. Um... <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, slight expansion and then adding that press box in, which was game changing for the stadium. He also had former coach Dave Cutcliffe, quarterback guru. He coached both the Manning brothers, Daniel Jones. Um, yeah. I thought of something funnier than 24. Let me hear it. <laughs> Daniel Jones. <laughs> And he was the coach during that stint that really kind of brought back Duke football for a bit. Yeah, so they have like prominent names around the program. Not the biggest, but definitely some ties to legacy and success. Cool thing with Wall Suite Stadium is that it is the only other stadium other than the original one out in, Cas in Pasadena that has hosted the Rose Bowl. They did this back in 1942, shortly after the Pearl Harbor attack just to kind of avoid a th any kind of threat of another possible attack at that bowl game. They moved it for precautionary reasons to Durham, which is pretty awesome to have the granddaddy of them all played somewhere pretty close by over here on the East Coast. They played Oregon State. Unfortunately, the Blue Devils uh, were not victorious. The Oregon State Beavers did win that game. Still pretty awesome that they hosted and played in a Rose Bowl. And not a lot of teams can say that. Okay, so before we get to the last grade, a fun fact. As you all know, Duke is very well known for their mascot, and that is the Blue Devil. And you're probably wondering where the Blue Devil even came from. It originated a long time ago, back in 1915. This dates back to World War I. When the United States entered the war, units of the French Blue Devils toured the country, helping raise money in the war effort. And a man named Irving Berlin captured their spirit in song, describing them as strong and active, most attractive, those devils, the Blue Devils of France. Uh, there's your fun fact for the day. All right, so with all that being said, I gave their history and tradition a 79. And also with that being said, my final grade for history and tradition is gonna be an 80. All right, and on to our final grade, which is field design. All right, so I guess in an effort to kind of rebrand the football program, uh, this new coach tried to instill a mindset into the stadium or into this program, and that is the mindset of not only bleed blue, which they should have just left it that. That's a pretty yeah, that's a pretty, that's good pretty good one. Iconic. But uh, to also grind. G dot R dot I dot N dot D. This acronym is uh, it kind of defies acronym law. Listen, man, this isn't 2016 and 2017 hustle culture, man. We're not we're not trying to sell you no online courses or anything like that. I don't wake up to the alarm and say rise and grind anymore. Time to motivate absolutely no one. So Coach Elko, this is the man who came up with this. Coach Elko is kind of like that guy, like, he's really just trying to keep up with the kids. And he, like, he just had he's just a couple years too late. Embrace the grind. Oh, yeah, okay. All right, so grind stands for grit. Relentless effort, integrity, now is the time in dependability. Okay. So he combines 
N and D into one phrase. Like, okay. And like, time is emphasized. But uh, that's not part of the, there's not a T in there. It's not grind D. Grind T. Can't spell it's grind T. Yeah. Or grind apostrophe T. Coach. Wait, yeah. We, we, need, we need to talk about this. I, I feel like you could have thought of something for N and D separately <laughs> and still had your grind <laughs> acronym. There you go. But if there's one thing you know about us in field design, is that we love real grass and we love painted end zones. Now, we're not gonna go in a rabbit hole with turf and real grass. We accept turf for specific reasons, but if you're in the Southeast and you got real grass, you better treat it well. And it checked off all the boxes when it came to that. So I will give y'all credit for that. And y'all had a really nice logo in the middle. Very nice, clean looking field in general. Another cool thing was the, the entrance gate at the corner of the stadium was like a super cool looking it's gothic like a, flame or gothic devil. It's like a, yeah, gothic. Is it a double gate? Does it open up? Yeah, it's like a, it adds a little bit of character to that little corner of the field. Other than that, like, I, I don't really have any any more to say about this field, man. Like, this is almost as good as it gets. Is it a perfect score? Not yet, but it can be improved to be a perfect score, and we'll get to that. We, we got a couple of fields that we can explain a perfect grade yeah. for, but as of right now... It's definitely the highest. Yeah, as of right now, this is my personal highest grade for field design. Is this uh, your highest grade? It is, yeah. A couple changes here and there, maybe cross that terrible acronym out. It would have been a perfect score. Yeah. Yeah, with, I'm not saying with that being said again. <laughs> so after going over all that, uh, my grade. All right, so what? <laughs> <laughs> with that being said, <laughs> I promise I won't say it again. <laughs> with that being said, I'm not gonna say it with that being said again. <laughs> with that being said, I'm gonna say it one more time. All right. <laughs> all right. So now that we've gone over, <laughs> all right. <laughs> I can't take a second. <laughs> So after going over all that, my grade for field design is a very high, highest grade I've ever given field. It is going to be a 97. Well, I think that's pretty funny because uh, my grade is also going to be a 97. Wow, well, did not see that. Congrats to you Duke Blue Devils on being the highest field design. Okay, so congrats to you. I said congrats. Congrats. <laughs> so congrats to you, Blue Dude. <laughs> blue Dude. <laughs> <Duh. laughs> oh my God. Congrats to you, Blue Dude. <laughs> you Blue Dude. <laughs> the Dude <doo> Devil. <laughs> Put it on a shirt. Right the the Dude Dude Devil. The Doo Doo Devil. So. So congrats to you, Bloop Doo Devils. Great, you still said Bloop Doo Devils. I'm having a stroke. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> We're going to end the video here. <laughs> so, <laughs> as tears are rolling down my face. Congrats to you, Duke Blue Devils, on getting the highest field design grade in Road Team Reviews history. Alright, so, yeah, let me stop recording. <laughs> well, that's a double A plus 97, folks. <laughs> so we'll go over our final grades. Final for me, for Wallace Wade Stadium, ended up being 77.2. And my personal final grade for Wallace Wade Stadium is going to be an 81.4, and that's going to be a B minus. So putting those both together ends up being a 79.3, adding that one beer bonus point because uh, they had some good beer selections in there. The final grade for Wallace Wade Stadium in Durham, North Carolina, Duke University is an 80.3, which is a B minus, but you know, that's a very commendable grade. That's why we have all the different categories because the legacy that's built into the stadium, that is just as important to the stadium 
as the structure itself, you know? That's why we go and we assess these things in person rather than just kind of looking at pictures of them and yeah. ranking them. So <clears throat> you don't know until you find out in person. Aside from that, what do you think's the better mascot, Duke Blue Devil or the Wake Forest Demon Deacons? If Duke played in the Duke's Mayonnaise Bowl, would that uh, contradict with anything? Would that cause a lot of mix-up? Would they cancel each <clears throat> other out? Yeah, would that just be a whole inception of a football game? What if you met a fan that was a Duke and a I Cleveland Browns fan? I think the simulation would break. So if you're yeah. a Duke fan and a Cleveland Browns fan, uh, just let us know. Anyways, guys, uh, thanks for watching. And Nate, would you like to... Oh, yes. All right, folks. Thank you for watching this video. We hope you enjoyed it, because uh, we sure did. If you want to see more, like, subscribe, share, do all that. Do us a lot of good. And as always, folks, we will see you on game day and on the road. This is Road Team Reviews, and we are out with game one of the college football season.